On today's show, we kick around in the snow. These Nordic sleds now have ties to our state, thanks to this family. We discover an off-the-grid destination so close to home. And watch out as the lumberjack lifestyle invades life in the big city. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. So, you ready to kick it? I'm always ready to kick it. Awesome. <laughs> What's well, old is new again, and we kick up some fun in the snow, thanks to a Norway tradition of winter transportation. Dashing through the snow. <laughs> so excited you're here. This is one of my favorite activities. On a one chair type of sleigh known as a kick sled. Kick sledding is an activity we do here with private groups and public lessons like this, but we do have kick sleds for rent at some of our other parks at Richardson Nature Center, Lowry Nature Center. Kick sledding is super fun new activity for people to try because it doesn't really take much skill or knowledge or special equipment. If you see one, most likely it came from Scandia Kick Sleds, based in Houston, Minnesota. A kick sled is like a, a dog sled, only for people. It's like a chair on runners. It allows people to do the old-fashioned uh, cross-country skiing, but being able to be very safe, and when you get tired, you got a chair to sit down on it. It's been said, what is old is new again. Kick sleds are rooted in Norwegian history, and now are regaining popularity. But they are very common in Norway, Sweden, and Finland. And kick sleds are useful for hauling wood or or going uh, fishing, ice fishing, you can have all your gear, or just getting out and enjoying the, the free lift, leave and just air, fresh air environment. Enjoying nature will always put a spark in your life, or in this case, it's vice versa. They call it a kick sled, but well, because that's an American word for it, but they also call it spark. Yeah. Spark is, is a normal, uh, regular term for kick sled in Norway and Sweden. Spark is kick, so it's uh, it's the one device that people can go out and and get a kick out of life. I mean, and it's sort of like a sort of a humorous way of put some spark in your life and you can enjoy the outdoors. Ben and Linda Lind started Scandia kick sleds back in the 1980s. Sticking to their Scandinavian roots, they import sled parts from Norway. Well, we're excited that our daughter and son-in-law have wanted to take it over now. It's a family affair as their daughter Christy and son-in-law Brent are now running the business. When we put our kick sleds together, it is a whole family event. Some nights we'll get dinner and we all sit around the table throughout the process because it takes us hours to put them together. Yet they always leave room for some family kick sledding fun. It's been just a great opportunity as a family to be able to get out there to do kick sledding as, as a whole. Also to see other families and, and other individuals enjoying kick sleds at nature centers throughout Minnesota here as well as other states. Their sleds aren't only sold to Minnesotans. We send them all the way to the east coast and out west we send them as far as Montana. And, and all the states in the Midwest yep. and Alaska and and we've had in the past to Canada as well. We just love the feedback from our customers when they tell us what a good time they've had as a family. 
a family that gets a spark out of life in the outdoors and a kick out of their customers. Sorry, I couldn't resist. You know, if you'd like to learn more about our stories, visit the Minnesota Bound podcast, The Stories Behind the Stories, where we get in-depth about all of our adventures. You can find them anywhere you find podcasts. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, Star Bank, and by Ice Force by Rapala. Dwayne and Margot Lodig long ago committed to build on Dwayne's dream. I do a lot of these every year. A niche tent company called Snow Trekker, a brand brainstormed and first built right here in Snow Country, the Lodig's backyard. And it is a gold mine, Douglas County in general. This is a story about Dwayne's passion for getting away. See, a lot of people around these parts think of far northern Minnesota as the region's most remote destination. Turns out, Douglas County over in Wisconsin offers a pile of wild public land a lot closer to the Twin Cities. The county signs sort of tell the story. Douglas County is the biggest county forest in Wisconsin. We have just over 278,000 acres of land. And our program started back in 1931 with 9,200 acres. Our land is all available for hunting, fishing, trapping, winter camping. Everything's available for people to walk on. Over 1,200 miles of roads and trails. Exactly why Duane loves living here, whether at home or back in the Douglas County woods in his favorite camping spot off the trail. It's quiet and it's wilderness, you know, and it's beautiful. A short hike takes us from a logging road back to the Lodix camp. Keep in mind, any camper can do this. Visitors pay a county permit of just 35 bucks to camp in the forest up to 10 days. I mean, there's been hunters and stuff back in here, but I kind of got a doubt that anybody's ever camped in here. That said, you might see a couple of people working, if you look hard enough. We're an active working forest. You're, if you come to this area, you're going to see timber sales. Those county logging projects and logging roads help provide access to campers, hunters, and anglers. We're not just focused just purely on logging or boards and cords. Uh, there's a huge recreational program. The resources are here and a person can set up a base camp and cross country ski, snowshoe, or just sit in a warm tent and read a book for the weekend. Rhonda Reynolds comes to set up the camp kitchen. Dwayne and Margo won't let me come unless I cook this, you know? We have orzo, we have bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts with maple syrup glaze, and we've got some beef filet mignon. It's the tasty lure of winter camp, completely alone and completely out here in Douglas County, worthy of a big thumbs up. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of these places you won't see any people tracks in the snow. You're, if you're snowshoeing back in these places, you're going to be the only one there. The definition of boundary waters and woods. Not up north, but right on the Minnesota-Wisconsin border. Oh, and if you visit, don't plan on seeing another soul. <laughs> Except maybe for the Lodics but I'm sure we're probably the only people that have ever camped in here. It's not that far a drive, and you can get a quality experience without having to go all the way up to the gunflint. 
still ahead, the lumberjack lifestyle becomes cool in the city. But first, this artist brings outdoor art into our homes. Closed captioning provided by Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Up next, wildlife art like you haven't seen before. Travis Frank introduces you to outdoor artwork indoors. You ready to do another floor? You bet. All right. Tony Stafke believes gifts are meant to be shared. Is that buck too small for you or do you think that'll work? No, that's nice. That'll work, okay. And art has no limits. And then maybe just a couple other fun little things like in the trees, maybe we put a squirrel on one tree. Tony lives to transform spaces in unique and unlikely places. So this is kind of the distant forest. That'll be kind of in the background. Once you get it sketched out, then you got a, a game plan, a battle plan. This is a floor mural, which is basically a kind of a three-dimensional look to it, like from a view of a deer stand when you're up in the deer stand. One brush stroke at a time. Acrylic, it dries so fast, you gotta do everything in layers. Tony brings the great outdoors, indoors, into Jeff Munnan's man cave. Getting the sponge out of here, because that's what we use for our trees, lots of trees. Well, I like to deer hunt, so we're, so the days I want to be deer hunting, I can come down and sit on the couch and feel like I'm out there. In a roundabout way, Jeff's deer stand painting idea came from his wife, Tracy. This is where it all began. After she secretly hired Tony to transform Jeff's bathroom view. I, I didn't know what to say, I was stunned. Am I special? <laughs> Right away, I thought we need to do this again on something else. So Jeff turned to his living room floor. I thought, well, let's do this. Perfect spot in front of the fireplace. This scene here, I'm really hoping when it's done that he can sit on this couch and almost get that same feeling when he's up in a deer stand. So he has a picture in his mind what it's gonna look like and then he just does it. Like Bob Ross, where's this happy little tree gonna live, you know? Like Bob Ross, Tony's love for the outdoor world inspires his love to paint. I'm inspired by, you know, nature, by, by the, the beauty of the outdoors. I love the color palettes out there. I love everything about it. It just feels like it's a, you know, it's a God-given talent. A talent he once hid behind the walls of a corporate cubicle. Uh, this is year 11. Before that, I did software engineering. Tony followed his heart, taking a chance that customers would hire him to create art. I just knew I just this is what I want to do. And I was just so, so thankful that there was still a market for it. His market changes every day. My style actually is pretty flexible, but I can do cartoon, I can do realistic, I can do more 3D. I enjoy it all. But yeah, the wildlife kind of has a little bit of an extra, a little kick to it that I like. Hard work and superior talent. It's amazing what he does in the amount of time that he does it. It's all good. When you're done and you can look at it and the homeowners are happy and it actually was a success and turned out, yeah, it's just a fantastic feeling. A feeling Tony Stafke has come to cherish. <music> Knowing his God-given gifts bring joy into the lives of others by transforming spaces into artistic places. Straight ahead, the fine art of Chuck and Axes. <laughs> yep, it's a thing. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by 
Cass Lake Chain of Resorts. Hewitt Docks Lifts and Pontoon Legs. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Okay, do you still have all your digits hiding in there? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly so, considering our next story, where I headed downtown to discover the big city's ode to the lumberjack lifestyle. If you're looking for a way to stay entertained, pick up an ax, just like our Viking ancestors did years ago. Basically, you know, axe throwing originated uh, in Norway, probably back in the old Viking days. They're basically just looking to pass the time, get over the winter months, kind of hone their skills. Now you too can pass time with an ancient timber sport called bad axe throwing. We've currently got 10 lanes. This is the largest location. We've actually also got the lar largest league uh, for bad axe throwing uh, for worldwide, actually. And 15th is Angela Holiday with 280. Considering our deep-rooted Norwegian heritage in Minnesota, it didn't take long for folks to show up. And if our ancestors did it, it must come naturally, right? We've had people that uh, it'll take them, you know, one throw to get it, they'll get it on their first try. We've had people that'll, maybe it'll take them out an hour to get it. I'd like to give it a go? All right. We got uh, 13 axe coaches here. You're gonna try and keep your arm completely straight. Uh, we'll teach you how to throw. We got a few different throws and we'll teach you the basics of what you need. Ooh, that cool. would have been a winner. Uh, as long as you get that momentum between you and the target with that one rotation, it's, it's gonna stick fairly easy. All right, it's getting closer. For the record, it did go there. It just didn't stick. You get 10 throws. The bullseyes were six, and then it goes out to four, then three, two, one. And then on the last throw, there's two blue dots that were 10 points. So the most points you can get in a game is 64. So first place currently, Phil with 728. Woo! It's more than just points that keep people coming back for more. I think there's the uh, kind of white Vikings aspect of it too. I mean, that's kind of cool to, to throw axes. Well, I was gonna say it's like really manly, but I don't know. There's a lot of, there's actually as many women here throwing as there are guys. No gender has an advantage. Maybe that's the draw, or? It's, it's a lot of fun. It's nothing like a team competitive or anything. It's a really nice, actually kind of relaxing, almost therapeutic in a sense. Twirling axes through the air as therapy? I guess for some, but others, it's getting in touch with that inner Viking. It's something that I've been doing for years. I started a long time ago because uh, I'm very Norwegian, which is, you know, very typical of Minnesota. And new friendships. Especially with our community that we've built, everyone's starting to become friends. We're creating new social groups. Maybe our ancestors began throwing axes as a way to make new friends. I think that sounds right on target. Yay! There we go, oh, nice. There we go. Whose league am I gonna join? Nice and Thank you. You know, it's a really good time over there. Looks like it. And you're allowed to bring your own axe if you'd like to. Perfect. Pretty cool. Well, that about does it for us. We hope to see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Excellent. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.